Hello, today we'll be looking at installing Windows 2025. This is a actually pre-release and we'll be doing this in Proxmox on a Dell and this is an R640. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. By the way, if you like these videos, please give us a thumbs up and of course subscribe, that really helps us out. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much, we appreciate it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. So I, I've reviewed Proxmox very briefly in a previous video where I gave you the whole tour. Now what I wanna do is create a brand new virtual machine. And I have a single host or single node at this point. So a single physical machine to work on. It is running the Proxmox. For those of you who are used to uh, vCenter and vSphere and all those things in the VMware world, I still have a data center and I, I would have multiple hosts or machines here that are the physical if I had more than one. So I have a single one, so I'm gonna go ahead and click this one. It gives me a sort of a survey of what I have, a summary. And in this case, I can see that I've created a few of them. I've already gone ahead and tested this and I have one running already, but I decided to show you how to set this up. And of course, this would apply to Windows 2000, you know, uh, previous versions, basically uh, 22 and 2019 and so forth. So in this case, what you want to do is go ahead right on top here, this create VM. Like most things, you'll notice there's multiple ways of doing this. I believe I could also right click on here and say create VM. So we'll just go ahead. This is gonna give it an ID, which is gonna be a little unique. That's fine. I'm gonna call it the Win 20 V2. Here we go, just to be different. I just go ahead. I'm gonna do a lot of next, next, next. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and click Windows Server. Now the latest version that this Proxmox, which is 8.1.4 is capable of uh, seeing or recognizing or proposing out of the gate is this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and select 11. 2022 and I'm going to go ahead and select an image that I've already put in which is the insider preview of the server a 2025 also being known as a v next so I'm not sure how they will brand it in the end but I'm going to go ahead and call it 2025 until they decide otherwise now for the SCSI controller I'm going to use the default LSI here instead since it seems to have worked out very well in the previous uh, one that I've checked I'm going to leave the BIOS to be OVMF. And let's see if there's anything else in here. Uh, TPM is fine. I can select the storage basically just to be local. I'm gonna go ahead and do next. So really when you create a machine, it needs disks, CPU and memory, which are here. And the rest is really to identify roughly what the system is. So you've got disk, as you can see, you could control the bandwidth on here. Um, I guess if you have multiple systems, uh, VMs running on a single host, perhaps you have a need for that. I would not configure that in, especially in the types of settings as SMBs, for example. I guess if you do have a VM that is particularly crazy on reading and writing from the disk. Maybe this might be a game changer for you. I'm gonna go ahead and select SATA and the size is actually down here. I'm gonna put 80 gigs, which is probably overkill for what I need. Uh, caching, again, all depending on what you're using. I've got a rate controller on here that has a battery, so I'm not really concerned with losing information. So I'm gonna go ahead and put right back right here. It's gonna make it faster. Of course, do keep in mind if using things like NVMe drives and whatnot, and you have no battery, if there's a power outage in the middle of a transaction, especially if you're using it like a database or something that's uh, your, like an ERP system, CRM system that happens to be on-prem, if those were to be doing some writing and all of a sudden there's power failure, you might lose part of a transaction. In some cases, it's not a big deal, but if it's a, a transaction involves some, you know, for example, a an, inv an invoice being, I don't know, paid or something and there's half the process that goes through. So, you, I mean, there are rollbacks and other things to counter this in SQL and other types of databases. However, that's when the write cache might not be great to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and select here how many sockets I have and how many cores. Now, in my case, I have a single physical processor with lots and lots of cores. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go a little crazy. I'm gonna give it 16 since from a licensing point of view, usually the license minimum 16 cores. So that would fit right in. I'm gonna go ahead and I don't think I'm gonna change anything on here. So I'm gonna leave it to the x86-dash 
64 v2 aes do next now memory so for the memory what you want to do is you want to put in a decent amount of memory i do not suggest you run anything on a server less than 8 or, or 16 even is really i guess it all depends on what you're doing with the server obviously but i'm just gonna go ahead and do this now for the network card uh, the previous one i used i used the vert io and it worked very well and i did point out in my previous video that i thought it was interesting that they actually have a vmware vmx net 3 compatible driver in here so uh, interesting that's I'm used to that one just because I've used a lot of VMware in this case we are not concerned with that so we're going to go ahead and just select this as default and I'm just going to go ahead and click on next and here's my information I'm going to go ahead and do finish and this will create you'll see here on the bottom where it says right there's a line there that says VM 102 create and now it's it says okay on top and I'm going to go ahead now and go here and we can start it. And now, of course, in starting, you are now going to be installing it. So I'm going to make sure that I have my keyboard ready and starting boot option. Press any key. And there we go. We are now launching the Windows 2025 installation. What I probably want to do is click on here and this is going to give us a much larger screen a much larger screen there we go and this a little bit okay so we're just going to do next 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 and not worry too much about it i'm installing windows server i have to agree now if you don't happen to have the product key in this case it is a just a, uh, a trial it's going to be a, a basically a lab environment i'm going to put i don't have a product key so that is an option on the bottom left now in order to visually show I'm going to go ahead and use the desktop experience. Now, if you are in a production environment, I would suggest when possible to just use the standard and use line commands instead. It is, I guess, better overall to have the fewer things installed on a server as you can. It all depends on what you're doing with it, who's going to be servicing it and so forth. This might be a better solution for you if you need the interface. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this and my aim here is not to talk specifically about the differences or what's new with the 2025 that will be a completely different video but i just wanted to show you i mean how straightforward it is to install a windows server i just happen to have this version that i wanted to demonstrate so it keep nothing i'm going to go ahead and install it and this is relatively quick okay so as soon as you do that we'll say do this later accept and i've got to put in password and there we go now in proxmox if you want to do a control delete you've got to click on the left side here and that will allow us to do click on a and then this here and i can close this so here we go and you get your first look at windows server 2025 or vnext now keep in mind the server really in many ways is boring so if you're expecting a very exciting new look and feel you're in for disappointment it basically looks like windows 11 and so you'll see from the desktop there's really nothing here and as you can tell the bottom it says windows server 2025 actually you don't see that on there let me let me move this there we go so windows server 2025 standard evaluation copy and really let me just stop moving this here okay i can't see the bottom though it's not working okay well yeah, i'm having some issues with the size of it let me see let me just switch this back to uh, this size and there we go there we go okay so now sorry about that okay so point is, is we are in, and you'll see it's it, it looks awfully similar to what you may be used to in the Windows uh, 10 or Windows 11 versions of the operating system. And of course, if you wanted, you can still use the control panel on here, it still exists. So for those of you who are more legacy or <laughs> older, we can take a look at that. And of course, you could go and check the uh, program and features. 
and at that point you can go and turn on or off things and i will go through a lot of these in a separate video uh, at this point i just wanted to uh, show just r roughly what it looks like and again you get the standard services they've all you know still useful since we haven't changed anything dramatic at this point you you will see changes from a security point of view from an active directory point of view again a lot of them are are more or less an infrastructure or back-end changes that they've done uh, they've increase the speeds for things like storage they've decreased the amount of cpu usage it requires for things like deduplication and whatnot so rough i mean that's what you would find in this sort of you know on, on this new version so that's about it so i'm bob pelvin c2o bob i hope you enjoyed uh, getting windows 2025 up and running with me on a Proxmox, on a Dell PowerEdge R640. Of course, you can mix and match a whole lot of those. You can uh, do something similar. Uh, so this both shows you the Proxmox, the ease of creating a, a virtual machine, and it gives you a very quick overview that the 2025 is still a familiar looking operating system. So if you'll be migrating in the future from 2022 or from previous versions, um, you'll find the familiarity very comforting. So please leave us some comments below. We'd love to hear what your you know thoughts are on Proxmox or on Windows 2025. And of course, you can visit us at www.ctobob.com. And I look forward to all those comments. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.